Hi, this is Bonnie from Fairy Stamper and today we are going to be working on some um, envelope art and I am going to be doing an envelope um, that is going to be for a six inch card. Obviously you can change it out and do whatever size you want but today I'm going to go ahead and make one for a six inch. What you need to start is a nine and a half by nine and a half piece of paper. Um, this is a little bit thicker than computer paper. So I am also going to be using the envelope punch board. There's always a way to make an envelope um, even without the punch board, but today I'm going to be using the punch board. And for this one, I need, according to the um, directions, nine and a half by nine and a half and four and three quarters. So I set my paper over here at four and three quarters and I have this punch. Now, the deal would be just that too. If you knew how this set up and where that would work, you could use any type of a, a little bit of a punch to give you that corner for your envelope flaps. And then you also score this and you rotate it. So I'm sure a lot of you know how to make your own envelopes, but this one allows me to have the right um, section that I need to decorate. And I just rotate this one around because it's square. I don't have to flip flip it to get a different size. So one more. And then we're all set up for our base and um, what we need to do. Um, so I actually go ahead and where it was scored, I actually fold it in to help me see that space a little bit better. And um, the first thing that I will do is I will put down a coat. Um, like I usually do when I make my cards, I will put down some um, Distress Oxide Pumice Stone. So I'll get that all set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so to do this, I am using my blending brush and I am going to be using a little bit. I'm gonna mist this up just a little bit. And then I'm going to be using my Puma Stone. Now I've showed you this in other videos before. Same technique. And I'm going to try to be a little bit careful, not get it on the edges. But again, it's really not that big of a deal. And I can tell you I'm going to be needing it on one of the flaps because I am going to go ahead and stamp one flap. So it's not going to matter if it gets up there anyway. So, And I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of this. Now, one time I had tried and I folded the flaps all in. And it actually um, did kind of like an embossing thing and I, it, you could kind of see where the flaps were. I do not want to do that so much um, because I don't like the lines showing um, on the front. There was really not any reason for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover this all and um, including this flap, just one flap. Now if you want to, yeah, I'm just going to do the top flap because I'm gonna be stamping that one also. Be right back. Okay, so this is dried, so I can go ahead and do some stamping. I always, um, for the, I need something right here to put the address, and so in this case, I'm going to be making the circle be a moon, and I'm gonna put it about where the address would go, and this circle is about three and a quarter inches in diameter. So I'm gonna be putting that down first, and I'm gonna be using um, milled lavender for this one, and I'm using my um, brush again, but I am not getting anything wet. Oh, I also masked off the side flaps so that when I do my um, inking, it won't go on the side flaps. Again, I don't know that that's really all that significant, but um, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. What I didn't realize is my brush is just a little bit damp still, but it still works. I just want a little bit of um, this lavender halo to start. Okay, so that again is going to be where the address is going to be. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer here. There we go. Okay, now, um, so then the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I am going to be using my faded jeans for the bottom and I am going to be making um, 
a, basically a place like where my um, stamp is going to be standing, if you want to call it that. So I'm taking the piece of paper that I cut off of my 12 by 12 to make my envelope, and I'm going to be making just a random torn bit for a, um, let's just say the ground. If you can have it a little bit more up and down, or you can have it whatever way you want. But in this case, I'm flipping it because and um, because I'm gonna do this bottom part first. And I wasn't really thinking there because I should have masked off the bottom just for the first one that I did. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly get my washi tape and I'm gonna um, secure this piece at the bottom down too. I forgot I was gonna be going this way with the ink. So sorry that you have to wait just one second. And of course my washi tape is all tearing up so I'm not getting the end of it. There we go, there's a little piece. I can't hold both these at the same time very well so I needed another piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and use another different um, brush and I'm using this time uh, faded jeans, I think I said that. And this is gonna be the walking place like I said. Okay, make sure that doesn't move too much at the bottom. This is like when you need several masking bits so you don't get it all over the flaps. Okay, let's take a peek. Yep, that works pretty good. That will be good for the bottom. Now, I go start working my way up and I am going to keep my moon well, you know what? I don't think I need to keep my moon there. I'll be fine. So um, I am going to be taking tumbled glass next because it's my lightest color. And I am going to start making some clouds. And I'm going to go up from what I just did. And just work around. Now, if you're concerned about getting any on your moon, you can keep your, your moon mask in place. And I'm going to go both ways with this. I'm going to make that almost match up, almost come up to the walking place or the ground. And you see a little bit of that lavender is showing through. It's really kind of pretty. And I, I think I'm going to go with that too. You just randomly flip it back and forth and I know I've showed you something like this before I just kind of like go back and forth and um, get your cloud look and you and you work that all the way up to the top and um, all that works really well because we've got our little mask going I really like this um, tumbled, this tumbled um, glass. It's very, very pretty and subtle, and it works really good with the other color. It looks really nice with the milled lavender. So it's really relatively a, a pretty simple card, or not card, but envelope. It doesn't really take too long um, to make this. I'm going to go up a little bit, and I think what I'm going to do um, up at the very top is I'm going to add a little bit of a darker color, which I'll probably just do the faded jeans again. It'll just... I don't know why, I just like to anchor it with a little bit of a darker color at the top. So we'll do that in just a second. Okay, and this was just like I said, torn paper and the ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the faded jeans at the top and because I'm gonna be doing that up there, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not gonna to need to mask it because I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be decorating, here, let me see, right there. 
pull that up a bit. Um, I am going to also be um, decorating this flap. So I won't need to mask that off when I just go to do this bit. Again, this is uh, faded jeans. Okay, let's go a little bit down. Okay, it gave us just a little bit of blue up at the top, darker blue, and then I kind of like blend in with whatever's left on my brush. Okay, so I want a little bit here on the moon, and again, that piece I just tore off this side, I'm gonna head, go ahead and use that for the moon. And um, get my other brush back, and I'm going to be using the um, Puma Stone that um, I started with because when you go to add another layer on top of another layer, it makes it darker. And I just want it to be a little bit subtle. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that. I'll make sure it's dark enough. Oops, piece is small. Okay. And I'm doing the same kind of technique I did for the clouds. I'm just doing that uh, subtly on here. I think I'm gonna use my smaller. I have a little bit more control of where I want it to go if I use my smaller blending brush. The pressure, it doesn't distribute it all over. I'm still not getting, here we go. And you know, it's always fine to add layers as opposed to having too much to begin with. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and quickly finish this part and then we're gonna do the flap. I have to flip everything around to do the flap. So that's what the front is gonna look like and then I'm gonna stamp it. There we go. Okay. Okay, so for the flap, same process, but smaller. And so I'm using a smaller moon, and that moon measures about, let's see here, one and a half. So that one's one and a half inches, and I'm gonna be putting this move to the side, and I'm gonna still be using the milled lavender. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add some of that. I moved it, no big deal. Line that back up. Okay, so we've got the moon all set up. Now we're gonna go ahead and, re it's like a repeat. I'm gonna do the faded jeans at the bottom. tumbled glass and right now my um, blending brush has a little bit of chip or a little bit of the faded jeans on it so we'll have a little bit of the blending and we're gonna go this way first okay this is smaller so you have to um, Actually, probably using the smaller blending brush would have been smarter. And I think I'm going to go do that for the rest. Have a little bit better control. Okay. I'm going to go this way so I can see. I don't want to get too much of that on the moon.
And this is what's kind of fun about this. It can be different every time you have a different look. And I think I'll do one more and then I'll add a little bit of the faded jeans again. Okay, so I wanna add some of the faded jeans and we'll be done with the inking part. And then um, the next thing I do is some stamping and the stamping is kind of fun. Okay, so that's our inking part for the front and inking part for the flap. Okay then. All right, so we are ready for some stamping and I usually like to, I could never think of the right word when I did my videos, audition. I audition my stamps by using the clear um, acrylic that comes with them. So in this case, um, I'm going to be using the, the smaller snails um, that go in the that face the right. I'm going to use this one and I'm going to use a small one and then I'm going to use a large one on the flap. And then the other um, stamp I'm going to use in this case is this is called Fairy Branches. And this one I forgot to, it's called Snails. Um, this is Fairy Branches. It comes with two branches and the reason it comes with two is so that you could use this singularly or you can attach it to the side of the branch and it just, it's really pretty. It's a really cool stamp. You can tell it's a large stamp, which is absolutely fabulous. Um, it's about six, it's a little bit bigger than six inches. So um, it's a great, great stamp and you can use um, any section of it. Um, and in this case, it's gonna go right above the address. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that um, put on. I think we'll do the snails first. And I'm gonna have the little one leading in this case, and they're gonna come right down to that part that I did with the faded jeans. I think I'm gonna attach this a little bit better. Oh, and the other thing you need to notice is I folded the flap in on the side. There's no way that this um, envelope will fit inside of the, um, the stamp, stamp platform. I'm having a problem with my washi tape. It wants to peel apart and not give me a big section here. Um, hold on a second, see what I can do. Sorry that you have to wait for that. Um, I'm just gonna use this tiny piece. All right, so I'm gonna hold that down a little bit better. But anyway, so I folded the flap in on this side. And on this side, I could have folded it in so it wouldn't stamp on it, but I thought I'm not gonna fold it again. So I masked this section. But we're good for the bottom part without having to do anything to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp both of those at the same time. And I'm going to be using a VersaFine Clear Nocturne. And it's probably going to have to be stamped twice because I'm stamping on top of um, Distress Oxide. But these stamps are just, I mean, these stamps are, especially these little snails and the details they have, they're just fabulous. They're, this, they're sweet. You can color these in afterwards. You can do make them shiny. Um, and what I usually do is I stamp them and then I use um, clear embossing powder. See, look, and aren't those just the sweetest? Here, let me get closer. They're just the sweetest little stamps. Um, anyway, um, and the reason I'm putting the snails on is because it's snail mail. And I've made one other envelope like this and I've shared it on Facebook. Um, and I, it was more blue. Um, same um, stamps I, that I used on it, but um, a little bit different color background this time. Now you see that's extending over my platform and that's okay. And I'm just trying to make that so that it kind of like curls around the top of the moon. I could come over a little bit. It's all in your preference. And again, I'm going to be using um, Versafine Clear Nocturne. And I'm just gonna try to ink just the part that's gonna be on there. And again, having a nice um, pad that is filled with ink works really well. You can see, yeah, that will work. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and put um, clear embossing powder over both of these and 
and they will be more set. And then I'll be able to color these even a little bit easier without losing the, the black detail. Because I use color pencil, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of color pencil and then add a little bit of um, glitter sparkle. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, see, I need a little bit more right there. The rest of it looks pretty good. see if we got it yeah that will work I can see a little bit right there I need to if I scooch this over just a tad my mask it won't do that little bump there and I'll get that side so I'm going to move it over just a little bit see if I can get a little bit more of that ink right there hold on I always call that little bump like a hiccup. Well, I think it's gonna, let me see. I'm gonna make it go over just a little bit more. Yeah, that's just gonna be it. That's what we're gonna do. It's good, it's gonna work out fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, clear embossing powder on it now. All right, so now I'm doing the top flap really quick. And if you can see, I have flipped my um, my platform around this way so I don't have to fold anything. It's just got the flap on this side. So it's just, like I said, adjusting um, how it fits inside of your platform. So again, I'm going to be using VersaFine Clear Nocturne. I'm gonna stamp up, you'll see how gorgeous these snails are once he, the big one shows even more detail. I want that extra ink. And I'm just gonna stamp him right there. And again, I'll go ahead and heat emboss him as well and then when I'll be coloring him in, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, let's see if he stamped well for us. He did, he looks great. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more um, because he's on top of that oxide. Yeah, that's even better. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off really quickly and show you what he looks like close up. See, he's just, he's, he's really cool. And then I've got these already um, heat embossed. So I'm, this side right here, I am going to add a little bit of um, white gel pen just to cover that bit up. And then I'm gonna use the black gel pen and fill this in. Okay, I'm gonna show you really quickly how I'm just gonna cover those up a little bit with the white gel pen. It's not perfect, but it's fine for the envelope, I think. And then this is my black one. And because the gel pens are usually um, glossy, it goes really well with the heat embossed that you really can't tell. So, got that all filled in too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some um, colors really quickly for the snails. Okay, so I am going to be using my Spectrum Noir metallic pencils. Um, they have a little bit of a shine to them and I am going to be using violet and pink and possibly blue, we'll check that out. So the darkest color I'm gonna go ahead and put towards the bottom. Not a really big deal, coloring these up. And turn that around, flip it around and get the other side. just realized I did not heat emboss this guy but it's still working fine okay, 
still see the, the black details. All right. And the pink for the top. I'm keeping the color behind at the top. It's lighter so that it looks like a highlight. And that's the look we're gonna go for for this. I might blend those in a little bit better. I think I have one that's a little bit lighter. This is the silver. I'm gonna blend those in just a tad bit better. Oops. So that's blended in a little bit better using the silver. Okay. Okay, so I went ahead and put my envelope together in the back. And what I went ahead and did is I did heat emboss this with clear embossing powder and I discovered that it made it even shinier and it looks really pretty. Um, it actually kind of like must be they have a little bit of a I don't know it can melt slightly the, the pencils so it actually made it look really nice and like I said there's a little bit of shine to them so it's really pretty so anyway that is the finished um, envelope and I hope you enjoyed that and um, everything I used will be in the description below and um, I'd also would like to invite you to the um, Fairy Stamper Hugs on Facebook. Um, we have started a challenge there and um, the winner will get $15 of credit for the Fairy Stamper store. So that challenge um, just started on Thursday um, on the 25th. So that was yesterday, if you're watching this video, video in real time. So, um, so um, I just want to go ahead and ask you to like this and if you could share it and if you could subscribe it would be fabulous. So um, I just want to thank you for stopping by.